Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus called to him to the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Last week we talked about sacrifice, and this week we're talking about sacrifice in our own lives as we think about those verses and taking up our own crosses. Now, we've all, the whole world, has had some personal experience lately with sacrifice. COVID-19 has forced pretty much everyone to sacrifice certain things. Now, in some cases, we gave something up, but not really by choice. However, uh, there were sacrifices we decided to make. We decided to give up something that we valued because we cared more about our health or our loved one or our neighbors. And that's one good definition of sacrifice. Giving up something you value for something you value even more. For instance, on hearing God's word, repenting, or for instance, hearing God's word, repenting, receiving forgiveness and worshiping were so important that we sacrificed some parts of our worship service or ways we used to do things, um, even though we didn't really want to be forced to change, right? We're Lutheran, so of course we didn't want to. Um, But one change was a relatively simple one in how we collect our offering. Um, We no longer pass around the offering plates. Uh, Rather, we have an offering box in back, um, and we've created the option to give electronically. Now, the, the way we did it changed, but for a church to keep running, to pay the bills and Um, pay salary and support our programs, we needed offering. And, right, you could all just keep your offering, but we're very grateful that you don't, that you're willing to sacrifice monetarily to sustain this congregation and, and our mission. Well, sacrificing was the old, <coughs> sacrificing was the Old Testament version of passing the offering plate around. People had to pool their resources to build the tabernacle or the temple in order to have a a priesthood who could work in the temple and work on the temple. uh, Other people needed to provide food for those priests who, right, because they're working in the temple, wouldn't have time to raise their own food but still needed to eat. So people brought in their goats and sheep, bulls and grain, and sacrificed their time in order to maintain or build the temple. Now, as I tried to establish last week, God didn't eat. He didn't need these items, but they were a way for people to demonstrate faith. It was an acceptable way, an invitation, a bid from God um, for people to show their love and devotion to him. If They did this by offering him something that was valuable to them as a gift to their rescuer and redeemer. Again, maybe one helpful way to think of it is like uh, in emotional language, they talk about making a bid. You talk to someone and they could respond in a variety of ways. They could uh, respond in in a negative way or a positive way. And these sacrifices were God uh, making a bid to his people and they could choose to respond in different ways. Well, uh, giving gifts is still a way that we communicate devotion and love even to this day. If someone special doesn't give you a gift for your birthday, well, it might sting a little bit. If you forget an anniversary, you might sting a little bit. Uh, A grandparent doesn't exactly need a, a drawing or artwork from their grandchild, um, but it still melts their heart when they receive them. In a world uh, without Hallmark gift cards or cash, um, in a barter-based system, how else do you show someone commitment and devotion? 
Well, the most straightforward way is to offer them a valuable item like grain or wine or a, a bull. We appreciate a gift from a child not because of its inherent value necessarily, but because it communicates their love and, and it makes us think of them. Do we have to have it? No, not really. But it's still important and meaningful to us. Well, we offer things to our triune God, and he appreciates them for some of the same sorts of reasons. In the Old Testament, it was lambs and grain and first fruits. Nowadays, it's more likely to be cash, credit, or check, or our time, or talents. But in neither of these cases are the items themselves the most important thing. It's what they communicate. The grain or the check can communicate our time and devotion or concern for God's kingdom. But they themselves are not really what God wants. Uh, what Jesus wants and requires of his disciples is to give him the only thing that is in at least some sense truly ours to give, our devotion, our lives. Last week I said that God, uh, what God desires most is mutual trust, love, and respect between us. He wants a relationship with us. We are beings created by God with, at least in some sense, a, a volition or a will of our own separate from his. Now, of course, our, our sin has separated us from him. It twisted up the connection between God and man that cannot be easily repaired or quickly fixed. In fact, you and I can't fix that broken relationship at all. There's nothing we could say or do or decide that would change it. It requires the Holy Spirit to, to fix that broken connection. Nevertheless, we are God's creatures that, that He loves and He appreciates and wants our love as well. Now, He gives us lots of good reasons to love him. And he's patient and persistent, but he doesn't make us love him. He doesn't force us to. It's the one thing that you might say that we don't have to do, but can voluntarily do. Now, if we have any sense at all, we should want to be restored to our Lord and our God. Yet, we are the guilty party, right? It would make sense if God shut us out because he didn't want to be burned anymore. And that's what makes Jesus' invitation uh, so full of grace. Jesus says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Anyone Anyone, anyone, Jesus says. It's, it, I think there's a lot of grace in this invitation. It may be a challenging invitation, but still the invitation is for all of us. That no matter how rich or poor we might be, how good or bad, popular or despised we are. It's the shocking and, ex and extremely wonderful that, that Jesus would invite us, any of us, to be with him. Even after all the sins and selfishness in your and my life, Jesus still wants us as his disciple. The creator, not just of Mars, but of the entire universe, desires your companionship, devotion, and, um, and conversation. Um, God doesn't need our sacrifices, nor is he relying upon our money or time or talents. Oh, we can't give him something that isn't already his, yet he does ask us for our hearts. Not so he can tyrannize us, but so that he can free us from the bondage of sin, death, and the devil. He doesn't want our lives so that he can use us up, but rather so that he can give us true life from himself. And what he offers us is beyond value or compare, but one we can only receive by uh, faith 
in entrusting our lives to him. And it's the kind of thing that it's hard to describe, right? But I think for us Christians, we know it, we experience it, we know how good it is, even if I struggle with how, to, how, how wonderful a gift this is. Um, if you don't know it yet, talk to a Christian, and you, you'll, even if you can't explain it, we can't explain it, you might get a sense of um, what it all is that our Savior gives us and the, the help that he gives us and the grace that he gives us. Well, as uh, Christians, we have to make sacrifices. There are sins that we are forced to give up, that we have to repent of, maybe even sins that we cherish, like hatred, rage, gossip, lust, drunkenness, all kinds of things, hoarding up things and keeping them only to ourselves. We have to sacrifice these things that are against his will, that are hurting the kingdom, that are hurting our faith, even though at times we may enjoy them. Now, um, this, uh, this slide about, um, one more, uh, about wrecking, uh, there's another one, one further. Um, sorry. Uh, one more. Um, that the sins that well, we have, we have to, to give them up, as this uh, says, that God, I like this slide because it kind of tells us what is it God wants to do. I mean, he, it kind of puts it strongly there. God wants to wreck our lives. He, he wants to tear down the sin that is in you and the, some of the things that, are, that really are important to you, the false idols that you and I depend on. He's going to redefine and remake us um, for the better. But sometimes <laughs> it burns a little or a lot. He, he needs to strip us down so that he can build us back up. In fact, if it feels like God is wrecking your life right now, it might be a good time to rejoice because God has a way of working through wreckage to do serious work on our lives. Now, I said at, at the beginning of the sermon that sacrifice can be defined as giving up something you value for something you value even more. Uh, where there is, is there something that the Lord is asking you to give up? Is there something that is precious to you that you need to get rid of? Something that you, that is valuable to you, but you need to exchange for something of even greater value. You see, sometimes we have to give up bad things, but sometimes even the Lord in the course of our life, we have to give up good things when they interfere with the gospel and God's plan. Uh, Jesus tells us if we want to follow him, then we must take up our cross. Uh, Christian discipleship, uh, being a Christian is not just a set of beliefs. It's not just an intellectual thing. It's, it's also a commitment, um, to a commitment to denying ourselves, to telling ourselves no sometimes because we want to say yes to Jesus. You know, following Jesus always will include sacrifices. And um, I think most of us are probably, uh, maybe I'm just being, I, I feel pretty fortunate, maybe you feel likewise, that God has really not, he's asked me to give up some things, but uh, he, had, he hasn't asked me to give up the sorts of things that, he, that some Christians have had to give up. Um, and once again, we know that our Lord is through us, is with us through those challenges. Um, and uh, sometimes we, we've got to let go of things because God is making room in our life for something greater. Uh, you see, the call of Jesus, the gifts of life and of fellowship and of forgiveness and reconciliation that God gives us are more valuable than, than anything we could ever give up in this life. I mean, it, does, it doesn't matter what it is, or even who it is, nothing that we can give up is greater or can even rival what God wants to give us. Because it's not just about uh, what we sacrifice. Jesus never asks for more than he gives. Uh, the gospel is about Jesus giving up his life for us. Uh, we follow him because he alone can lead us to the cross. He helps us to repent 
and to receive God's mercy. And He alone can lead us to let go of this world so that we can become members of God's eternal kingdom. We will gladly sacrifice because what we gain in Christ is far more valuable than anything that this, in this world that we could offer. In Jesus' name, amen.